So the Don't Hug Me I'm Scared TV series just aired on Channel 4 in the UK, and yeah, I can safely say that it will continue to haunt my dreams. For the 10 of you watching this that haven't heard of the Don't Hug Me I'm Scared series, it originally started off as a web series created by Becky Sloan and Joe Pelling. And I actually remember watching the first episodes with friends whilst at uni, which was... 11 years ago? Fuck, I'm old. The best way to describe this series would be like taking an episode of Sesame Street, injecting it with copious amounts of drugs, whilst forcing it to listen to an album by Disturbed. <laughs> yeah, despite looking like a children's show on the surface, it is very much not, and will contain a lot of incredibly dark and messed up imagery. The standard formula would be that we'd start off with our three main characters, Red Guy, Yellow Guy, and Duck, and yes, those are the official names. A random object would then come to life and would start singing a song to teach a seemingly innocent life lesson. But as the song progressed, things would start to become increasingly dark and disturbing. But this proved to be an incredibly successful formula as the web series saw huge popularity, with the first episode currently holding over 70 million views. The web series consisted of six episodes, with the final episode uploaded on June 19th, 2016. And though it was sad to see the series go, the final episode did seem like a fitting ending. But with the show's crazy popularity, it wasn't too surprising to hear rumours a year later that a continuation of the series was in the works. And then in 2018, we got a small teaser trailer titled Wakey Wakey, previewing a Don't Hug Me I'm Scared television series, which would be made in collaboration between Blink Industries, Conoco, and Super Deluxe. The show would allegedly feature a larger cast of characters, now officially taking place in a town called Clayhill, and would have more of a focus on current affairs. But for whatever reason, this series would never be completed, and the official trailer would be taken down from the Don't Hug Me I'm Scared YouTube channel. Though you can find footage online of the pilot episode which showcased at the Sunday's film festival. Now if I'm being perfectly honest, I'm actually kind of glad this series never came to be. Creating a show around current affairs usually means going for the low hanging fruit. And I felt Don't Hug Me I'm Scared was always better than that. And because the nature of current affairs can move so quickly, unless you're a show like South Park which can turn out new episodes in a very short production time, you're gonna risk making your show's content feel already dated by the time it's released. Soon enough however, it was announced that another TV series was in the works, this time only being produced by Blink Industries, and set to air on the UK network Channel 4 and would go back to focusing on the three main characters, with the aspect of current affairs being dropped, keeping it much more in line with the original web series. With series director Baker Terry stating in an interview, The goal was to keep the show small, to not try to expand outwards and create this gigantic South Park style cast of recurring characters, and to keep everything as insular and as tiny as possible. The series released on September 23rd, and so how does it hold up? Well, from a visual and technical standpoint, the show looks absolutely fantastic. It maintains that look and feel from the web series, but you can feel the increased budget here, as the production values have truly improved. We get more locations, and a huge variation of new characters, all of which have unique designs and puppetry techniques, with some being smaller puppets using wire to operate, and others just being these full-blown costumes. And I really like how they've tried to keep the effects as practical as possible. Like, just look at this road here being operated on a roller. Brilliant stuff. The show also utilizes other forms of animation such as CG, 2D, and, huh, clay animation. Ugh, claymation. The highlights of the animation are definitely in the song segments, as it just looks so visually gorgeous at times. The songs themselves are pretty good too, though I don't think they stick in my head as much as the web series songs, but perhaps that's because I've watched the web series many many times. No. 
like in the web series, the TV series has a lot of visual easter eggs going on in the background. Some being a reference to the web series, some perhaps hinting at the deeper lore going on in the show, and others just being there for a bit of fun. I think one of my favourites was this very brief shot we get of the production team setting up a shot, but it's literally there for less than a second, so blink and you will miss it. I'm sure as time goes on people will begin noticing more and more and will start crafting fan theories, so if there's any you notice in the show, please do post them down in the comments. Though there is a moment in episode 6 where I felt the show was giving a cheeky middle finger to some of those fan theories, but maybe that was just me. Now despite my great love for the web series, I was always skeptical about how it could be adapted for a TV show, with my main concern being the structure. See, the web series episodes would average from 3.5 to 6.5 minutes long, and much of it would be focused around a song, whereas each television episode would be averaging around 23 minutes, and realistically, you can't really have that all be one giant musical number. So what the show has done is try to add more comedy with a much greater emphasis on jokes. And although there are some moments I don't think quite stuck, for the vast majority of the time, it actually works. And the timing on them is brilliant. Hi. Hello. You alright? Ranging from dark humour. To visual gags, and to just simple slice of life jokes. Like episode 1 where our characters are getting jobs in a factory, and all the co-workers are just making constant office small talk. Oh, hello. <laughs> You're right. Working hard or hardly working, eh? Hey? <laughs> like, I've worked in a few different office environments, and it is painfully relatable at how accurate some of these remarks are. How are you? How is your child? Good, thanks. I like my child, but not as much as I like lasagna. Another concern I had for the series moving to television would be any censorship made by the network or restriction of creative freedom, in that the team would be told that they need to tone down some of the more darker and zany elements. But I'm happy to say that the creativity and darkness is still very much there. Episode 3 in particular has a really creepy vibe to it, with some parts that really lean into the horror aspects. Well, that's a stretch. Cluster or a clump? <laughs> Right. Also, this might just be a coincidence, but I felt like the two twins really reminded me of the twins from Fine and Sam. Now, if I had to mention a negative with the TV series, it's that the story structure can be quite chaotic at times, and I think that could be off-putting to newer viewers. Each episode does have its own unique theme, and there is a basic plot behind that. Episode 1 is about getting a job, episode 2 is about death, and episode 3 is about family values, etc, etc. But there's so much weird and crazy stuff happening all the time that it can get a bit overwhelming. And although that's what fans of the series expect to see, for a newer viewer, you could be sat there a lot of the time thinking, what the fuck is going on? And because so much is going on at any given time, it is a show that requires you to be paying attention, not really something that you'd have on in the background. So I can see how this wouldn't be everyone's cup of tea. As for me, however, I would say that overall I thoroughly enjoyed this watch, and I'm happy to see that the darkness and creativity that made the web series so great has been successfully carried over to TV. If you were a fan of the web series, you will definitely enjoy this, and if you've never seen it before, I'd recommend checking out the web series first, just to see if it's your thing. I do really hope this show does well, as it looks like a lot of effort was put into it by the team, and I would very much like to see it continue for a second season. Plus, I'd hope it would encourage the future development of more creative adult animated shows that don't just fall into the generic Family Guy ripoff. If you have already seen it, let me know of your thoughts down in the comments below, and any theories you may have crafted along the way. But until the next one guys, take care.